Oh, I forgot to do an intro to this video, but uh, I have been very well, so I decided to do a little job I've been putting off. Uh, as a lot of you, if you're a subscriber, will know, I fly with a Tango 2 transmitter, which I love, the TBS Tango 2. And I decided to uh, sort out me little tiny whoop, little tiny whoop, right, so I can use my Tango 2. Now, yes, I know there's the module you can buy now and faff about and put the module B on and stuff, so you've got multi protocol. But because I was so impressed with the Tango 2 and the Crossfire, I've swapped all my quads over to Crossfire. So basically, I don't, I don't need a module B on the back of mine. I have just swapped everything over to Crossfire. But uh, yeah, so like I said, this is basically just swapping over or installing the receiver for the whoop so I can use my Tango too. It's a long video so I'll put some little time stamps down in the bottom in case you just want to jump fast forward but whatever you want to do. Okay then, right let's get on with the video. Real BT. Hello pilots and ground crew, welcome back to my channel again. Well uh just doing some of my little tiny whoop today right I wanted to put because I'm using the Tango 2 right I wanted to put uh, a Tango 2 antenna in there and because these little ones are out now these tiny little things right they're made by right uh, Team Black Sheep they're the Immortal T antennas now they're made by, they're manufactured by Team Black Sheep, however they didn't design them. But they say they work fine on their little nano receivers which I've got here. Now because it's a little whoop board, I haven't got any spare UAX or out on this particular one. So I'm soldering it up as S-Bus, but it'll still work fine so I can use my Tango too. Right, now before anyone says there's other ways around it, I know, but to me this was the most straightforward way. So I thought, seeing as I'm doing it, I'll just knock out a video in case anybody else wants to do it. Well, I've got my little nano receiver, right, just need three wires this time, right, your ground, your red, your 5 volts, and the next one along, right, is your TX. And you wire it up there because your TX also works as S-Bus. Now, that might sound a bit confusing if you're a new pilot. So I'll leave a link in the description to a video I've already made about different ways of wiring up the little nano receiver. Okay. And I've already stripped down this whoop. Now what I've done is, because you're never going to be able to see what I'm doing in here. I've done a big print out picture to show you. And what we've got here, the ground and the live wire from the camera, I'll be adding an extra wire to it to run the receiver. And just down here, there's an RX3 port, which represents your S-Bus. Right? So, basically, that's how I'll be wiring it. Right? So, the ground will be getting doubled up. The 5 volts for the camera will be getting doubled up. And the S-Bus will stand alone. Alright, and for some of this small there shouldn't be any problems. He says hoping. Now the actual antenna that's already on the board I will be removing just so there's no confusion. Okay then, right, let's first of all just take a quick look at this little uh, Immortal T. You may have seen them before. The basically, if I reach into my crossfire box and grab one of these out, there's your normal T, T antenna for your crossfire and this is just its uh, baby brother. Like I said, manufactured by Team Black Sheep but not designed by Team Black Sheep. But they have said it will work fine all right, with the nano receivers. But <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's bring that bit of paper back but the other way. You can see. I mean, we are talking night and day here, aren't we? This thing is tiny right it's tiny you can actually make these right by cutting down one of these but don't do that unless you really know what you're doing right because i'm not going to go into it 
Uh, it's a bit of faffing about and there's no guarantee but you have to get the millimeters exactly the same uh, and you also it's a lot of messing about it can be done if you're interested in that do that right but these things are cheap they're about three pound which is what about two two fifty dollars or something like that so you might as well just buy one see if cutting up the one you've already got but anyhow you see how small they are let me put that back in the box and it's the same sort of setup as any you basically connect up your antenna connect up your ground and your signal and in this case the signal is s bus now before i get started i'm going to figure out where the hell i'm going to mount this even though it's tiny all right but obviously i can't put it on top or it's going to cut into the props so i'm wondering if i could maybe no I'll put it at the back could i just just have to figure this out i don't want to tape it onto the ducts uh, didn't plan this uh, could just go underneath there or underneath that way and then the board's going to be under there so uh, here we go let me get my tools the secretaries the famous secretaries that everybody should be using right i can't have it there all right i'll zoom in a bit so you can see there you go right i can't have it there or it's going to hit the props all right so ideally if i have it there i'm not going to be able to keep it in place i could just have it coming out the top of the bloody canopy yeah and just see <laughs> i could <laughs> just a minute oh, fiddly bloody things i could just have it coming out the top of the canopy at the back just sitting on top coming out the canopy because there's enough room on the antenna to run down and get oh will it that i ah, seeing that will it actually let me just put that loose fit there to run all the way down to go underneath to go no the ain't enough room to do that so that's out that idea is out right uh, i'm not going to jump shot until i figure it out and once i figured it out i'll put it on as a jump shot but i want you to see because if you do this you're going to have the same problem right uh, let me guess now um definitely can't have it anywhere on the top because the props will cut it if i put it under i think i'm just gonna have to mount it underneath with a little bit of tape on the antenna and the duct but i don't want to do that i do not want to do that um i'll go that way See, no matter where I put it, I'm going to get a hell of a lot more <laughs> more range on what, what you do with these uh, little things that come with these whoops. So, and remember, I'm not doing this for long, long range. I'm just doing it so that if I'm quarter of the way across the field, it don't feel safe. But uh, I could. Just a little bit of tape. Hold it in place there and there. I think that'll work actually because yeah you're gonna get a bit of interference because it's a bit close to the motors all right ideally you could make a mountain of it right out there all right but I don't own a 3d printer and I don't want to faff about too bloody much so I think I'm just gonna mount it there like that yeah and see what happens I can still get at it to uh, plug into the board and everything yes so i'll do that now right 
jump shot I'm going to mount that the way I've decided and I'll be back right then I've got it on I've just put a piece of tape around each antenna to hold it in place like I said it's not the best way of doing it uh, it's not the best however uh, this isn't for super long range it's a bloody wool but it's just so I've got that little bit extra comfort to go a little bit further and at the same time I can use my tango too uh, so I put it on with a bit of tape at the moment once everything's in I've just left it like that in case I have to change it but once everything's in I will probably take that tape off and just put a tiny little blob of hot glue all right, to hold it in place or maybe even some super glue you know what I mean all right but probably just a blob of hot glue just to help hold it in place all right but uh, at the moment that's pretty well tight and it'll do to get everything set up and get flying and see if it works okay and I'll show you what you need to do in beta flight and well yeah I'll show you what you need to do on the Tango 2 as well all right but it's not that difficult all right in fact if you're already using a Tango 2 you'll know how to swap from Crossfire to S-Bus but I may stick that in depends how long this video goes on for because I don't want to make a huge long video right now we've got our little uh, Nano TBS Nano just stripping these wires off so I can tin them and solder them on you can do that with your nails if you've got any unlike me right uh, good idea to turn the soldering iron on George right while that soldering irons heating up I'll just show you this again yeah just next to where that green wire is which you can't see that's why I showed you the picture there's the um, RX3 UAC pad and that's where the signal wire will be going and then the black and the red will just be doubling up all right which is fine all right to double up your black and your red it's not great you know I'll tell you what you'll never have to do it apart from on like a walk board okay so I'll just leave it like that usually on like a 5 inch or even a 4 inch or even a 3 inch quad right you're gonna have spare right ground and 5 volts and stuff because if there was a spare ground and 5 volt on this I would use it however there isn't right and I don't want to use the battery voltage right for the simple reason right it five volts <sighs> right let's just double check that yeah right let's just tin this up then can't help you with soldering you either know how to solder it or you don't but there are plenty of videos out there showing you how to solder right and i recommend before trying anything like this right practice your soldering I think I've mentioned it in other videos get some spare wire cut it up and then solder it back together right it's just a bit of practice all I'm doing here is called tinning just putting a blob of solder on the end of each of the wires don't worry if it's a bit big or a bit messy because you can easily trim that down again right like the black the ground is too big so I'll just snip that end off. Oh, it's just got a bit darker. Snip a bit of that off. Alright, and while we're here, alright, I'm just going to tin up that pad. Like I said, it's just next to where that green wire is. I don't know if you'll see it. It would be easier to unsolder the green wire and unsolder the uh, butt. Alright, get a nice hot soldering iron. Just cleaning my tip. Oops. Get a nice hot soldering iron. A right. little bit of solder on your tip, and you want to be in and out. You don't want to be messing about holding it for ages. You'll burn the pad off. Get your soldering iron hot so you're in and out. All right. This is tricky. I might have to remove that green wire for. I can get it there. There you go. In and out. That's it. 
Now that is something about soldering I'll just mention for newer pilots. Make sure your soldering iron's hot. You don't want to keep your solder iron on the board for ages. You can burn out the board, you can lift them little them little gold pads, you can lift them up and stuff. And knacker stuff up. Right, and while we're here I'll just take off the antenna that's already there. Oh. I'll see antenna, this little bit of wire which I'm not going to throw away right because I know that that's the perfect size for that so just in case something's wrong and for some strange reason it won't work I can always put it back again but that's not going to happen right now let's just figure out this is going to go at the bottom that way that way actually so I want that like that, that'll be plugged in and at the bottom. So I want these wires coming back on themselves. That's the thing with these little whoop jobbies. This is not, <laughs> I say new pilots, this is not the best thing to start, start with uh, if you're a new pilot. Right, because everything is so tight. I'll tell you what, that green wire is in my road constantly. Right, so I'm just going to remove that and then put it back on after. There you go. It's in my road. There you go. We've got space now. Oh, it's got dark in here. I don't know if you can still see, but the sun's gone in. Right, so making sure you get it in the right order. Uh, just double check, oh yeah it's going that way so the ground move that round right. ground to ground 5 volts to 5 volts I hope you can see this well actually you've probably got no chance but still there you go a nice hot soldering iron so you're in and out in a flash you don't want to be holding your solder iron for ages and red to red that's it well, it takes this uh, oh where'd that come from that's my ground from my camera oops i just have to zoom out a little bit oh wrong way there you go that's my ground from my camera's come off so not the end of the world I'll just put it back on again don't worry I was going to say at the end now double check all your wires and now it's come loose but there you go you just saw it come loose I'll tell you what before I do that I'm going to put a little bit more solder on the tip of that wire that's come off Just solder. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a light in a minute. It was bloody sunny in here a second ago. Ah, hell's bells. Now the other side's come off. <laughs> no problem. Don't get stressed. New pilots, when you're doing stuff like this, things will happen. Don't get stressed and start. Rrr. Don't do a judge. There. Right, ground to ground. Black to black, red to red. Now, this yellow one. Which way we're going that way? This yellow one. Uh, now if I do that I'm not going to get the green in so I'll tell you what I need to put the light on it's gone dark can't see well that bloody didn't make a lot of difference let there be light I don't know it's still bloody dark right yeah I'm going to have to put that green one on first so what we'll do is put it on reversed 
Let's move that over. If you're a new pilot, set yourself a few hours to do jobs like this. Don't think, oh, it's only three ways, it'll take me ten minutes. Which, in a way, I mean, this all together should only uh, should only take half an hour, right? But set yourself more time because things can happen, things can go wrong like that. Cables coming off, and you start rushing, right? This is the uh, TX wire from the receiver, which will become S bus. No, tell you what, my tip's dry. Just clean my tip up and put a little blob more solder on. So, if there's a bit of solder on your tip, you don't have to fight it. Because, like I said, I only want to be in and out. I don't want to be messing with the soldering iron. Shit. Right. That's on. Yep, yep, and yep. Right. Now, before I go any further, right, I've done a video about this winterproofing uh, your thingy. It's like a silicon sealant right here, so you can have a read. Oops, getting shot, George. And uh, there you go. It's a silicon coating, right, which protects your electrics. Okay. And if they get wet, plus it's a bit like a glue, so it'll help hold your connections. But if you're worried about stuff getting wet, give you board a coating. I've already done this board right? so really I don't have to go around everything I do all my boards but with them extra wires like I said it's just a little bit of glue and I've already done this board so I'm not going all the way around it front and back and stuff it's already been done right? but uh, even in summertime right, I'll put this stuff on because right, you don't know, you might crash into a bloody puddle where it's rained. If you live in the UK, you, you know what I mean? Summertime don't mean a lot. Right, I'm just going to give that uh, about five minutes to dry and then I'll be back and I'll connect the antenna on, put the board back in and we'll swap over to uh, beta flight and do a couple of little changes in beta flight and uh, then we'll give it a little test. Oh no, I'll also have to change something on the Tango too. I said I'll show you that if I remember, but uh, I just did. Right, uh, let that dry five minutes, uh, jump shot. Right, and we're back again. Right, now I have to remember which way this is all going to go. That's to go down that way. <laughs> oh boy. I think them wires I put on actually are too long, but luckily we've got enough room to. I can wrap them under there. Yeah, that should all wrap up okay. Right. That's the back. That will go that way to the front. That will fit on like that. Yeah, right, we're sorted. First things first, uh, let's connect up this little antenna. This UHF antenna. Get this lined up right because you don't get many chances. You bend the pin on these and you, you know, weld the pin. I was just going to say, if you get it right, you'll hear a click. I just did the click. Alright, just bending it round on itself a bit. There. Alright, it's tight. And now... <sighs> ok. 
Go out your bugger. Bit more tape just to help hold that antenna in place and stuff. Right. Okay then. Right, that's gonna go there. Oh, this is fiddly, but can't be helped. Now remember, you've got your USB plug here, which you are going to need, but you've put the uh, Immortal T antenna there, so the antenna will need to be to one side, so you can actually get your, uh, ah, your USB, but we'll figure this out as we go. I'm just going to get... One cable in first, move them aside. Right, just turn it over. Right. Uh, tools, no lollipop stick, just to move stuff around. Now you see, I've just moved that antenna. Just slightly to the side of the USB. Hope you can see that. You should be able to. Now, while holding on to everything, <laughs> these things are fiddly. Just gonna have to try and get the board back in. Right. Now, before anything, checking the camera. All the cables are still connected to the camera and the VTX upside down looks like everything's still soldered can't really see i can get at the usb all right let's put the lid back on screws check it's all level as I look at it, camera looks level. I can get at the USB. I'll show you that there. Just have to move that a little bit more there. Yeah, you can get at the USB, which we'll have two next. And uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, oh. Right, all I'm going to do is plug the motors back in. Right, and then we'll jump onto the computer and show you after what you have to change in beta flight. And if I remember, I'll show you what you have to change in crossfire. And uh, we'll give it a little test. Okay then, like I said, I'm just plugging the motors in. So straight over to uh, the computer. Or the Tango 2, whichever comes first. Right, jump shot. Okay, the first thing I'd better show you, which I forgot to show you, is which bloody drone it is, which rope. It's the Yixing US slash UK 65, if you're interested, they're on sale at the moment. And before anyone says why well, he's in his dressing gown, I am being very well, so I'm having a lazy day, and I thought that's why I'd do this at the same time. But yeah, it's, there's a better picture down here somewhere there will be. Yeah, it's the UK slash US 65. You can look at this yourself at some point. There you go, get a better picture there. But uh, you get the gist, you've probably seen them before. They've been out a while. They've actually got a newer version out as well. But uh, yeah, so that's the quad I'm working on. Right, so it's plugged in. So let's just uh, move over to beta flight now. Let's just plug it into beta flight and see what happens. Lights have come on, so that's a good sign. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, don't worry about that, the quad, it's upside down, if you know what I mean. But uh, I'll tell you what, that's because I've caught the USB cable, you plonker, George. Uh, come on, Wolf, thank you. Yeah, the quad's on an angle, so don't worry about that. Right, ports tab. 
Right. Now, if you remember that wire that was soldered up, it was on UAC3. So we need to turn on Serial RX for UAC3. Right. Save and reboot. Yeah, man. You're not going to open again, are you? Yeah. Come on, open up, up. What's wrong with you? Oh, we're running slow, yeah. Having to connect. I've got it on automatically connect. I'm having problems. There you go. Right, we'll just double check that. I always like to double check everything, yeah. And then we just come down to the configurations tab. Right. Uh, and here. Right, your receiver type, you want it to serial based receiver and we want SBUS for this particular thing and we'll save and reboot. Save and reboot. <laughs> oh, it caught this time, yeah, I should bloody think so. Let's just double check it because I always like to double check. Uh, oh, come too far. Where are we? Yeah, serial base receiver, S bus. So all that should be ready. Just got one thing to change in uh, the computer. In the computer. In the fucking hobby. You can tell our mill. On the Tango 2. Right. And there. Uh, here I'm just checking stuff out already. Yeah, just got one thing to change on the Tango 2 and we're off. So we can come out of here now and let's just move over to the Tango 2. Okay, then here's your Tango 2. Oh, I've got my little, you can't see that, but there you go. I've got my little quad here. And I'd already previously bound this, uh, the actual antenna up. All we've done is swap it to SBUS, as we know. So I'm just plugging in the quad now, and it's come on. Now what you need to do, or check, if we just click enter on the Tango 2, sorry, click enter on the stupid boy, click the menu button on the Tango 2, then click enter, right, and you can see there it's showing up, right, for the Nano RX because the quad's plugged in, right. Click on that, give it a second, go down, and you see there where it says output 1 S bus and output 2 is just channel 2, channel 3, whatever, but on output 1 you want S bus, okay, alright, mine did it automatically, but I might have mine set up different to yours, but that's why I thought I'd show you, on that page you want S bus, okay, and that's all there is to it. That's it. Now, if I just zoom out a little bit. There, you can see I just had the quad plugged in just to show you. And you see the green light in the Tango 2. And if I unplug the quad, right, green light vanishes because we've lost signal. But yeah, the only other thing you had to do in bit. Telemetry lost, I know. The only other thing you had to do in beta flight, which I didn't mention, is set up your mode, as in your arm switch, your acro, right, your flight mode, whatever you wanted to set up, right? But I didn't show you that because that's just setting up your modes. Okay, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just try a little line of sight, see if it flies straight off from one, shall we? Plug it in, if I can, get in, bloody hell, got the battery the wrong way, that would help wouldn't it George, get the battery the right way, got the battery the wrong way, right, Telemetry recovered. plug it in, put it there, zoom out a little bit, and uh, um. <laughs> oh, Right, well that's working. I'll tell you what, let's put her on the deck. Can't see that there, let's just move back a bit. Give it a little go. Right, let's give it a little go.
Hey! Well, throw them up to me. Uh, still in the dressing gown. Yeah, works okay, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so put the antenna at the back, as you know. Oh, let me just unplug the battery. Ah, it seems to work okay. Just have to, uh, not in shot, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just have to give it a little test. I know the telemetry is lost, it's bloody unplugged. Uh, yeah, just have to uh, give it a little FPV test now. Okay then. Uh, I could just fly around the house and stick it on the end, but that's pointless. So I'll just do that as another video. You've seen what the main part of the video was. It was something I was doing, so I thought I'd knock it out of the video at the same time just in case somebody else wants to do it but yeah so I won't bother showing you an FPV flight because it would only be in the house and you've seen millions of them but yeah so apparently in a couple of days the weather's meant to be a little bit nicer so I'll see if I can get out in the garden or just to the park or something and give it a little go okay then <coughs> okay then pilots and grand crew uh, just a bit of fun just fancy doing it as soon as them little antennas were out. So if you've got any questions, just leave a comment. Right then, I'll leave it there. Uh, link in the description to that other video about wiring up the nano receiver, just in case you didn't know. And uh, I might, if I remember, leave a link to that quad if you're interested. It's a great little quad though. I love this little thing, it's great. They've made a version 2 out, which is a uh, 2S, so you'll get longer flight time. Uh, but I love this little thing because it's ideal for in the house. It's so, it really is a, a proper, well, it's not a proper tiny whoop. There's only one tiny whoop, right? Uh, Jesse Peck? No, that's wrong. I can't remember the name of the guy who invented the tiny whoop, but we all call them tiny whoops, don't we? Okay then pilots and ground crew, thanks for watching and cheers. Thank you.